Dr. Jaffe, we have a customer writing in and asking for details on what is going on immunologically or biochemically when a lymphocyte is shown to be activated, you know, in the LRA, on the LRA panel through the LRA testing. So specifically, how does lymphocyte activation equate to a type two, three, or four response, please? Well, first we have to start with the novelty of the LRA system. The lymphocyte response assay is an ex vivo cell culture. Ex vivo means the specimen that we observe in the laboratory is reacting just as it would in the body, which in turn means that certain rules have to be followed so that the specimen gets to the lab and can be um, applied in this ex vivo system where we have a novel micro titer plate. We had to develop a different micro titer plate than anyone has ever had or seen, and actually we patented it because <clears throat> we wanted to do something no one had ever done before, which is combine amplification technology with cell culture technique. It's called ELISA ACT. It's the first functional enzyme amplified procedure. ELISA means uh, enzyme linked immune sword assay technically. We are the ones who pioneered the fact that when you coat the antigen, the item you want to test, the food, the chemical, the substance, once you coat that on the bottom of this well, into which you're going to put some cell-rich plasma. And then you're gonna bring the specimen back up to body temperature for three hours. And then you're going to look at the reactions of the lymphocytes because, and we've done this on the research side, this is not done every day, but we have, my daughter actually is an engineer and she did the following. She set, in essence, a movie camera to watch the three hour process. And what you see is first what's called an APC, an antigen presenting cell, an APC. And it starts wiggling and it wiggles over to white cells. It wiggles over to these lymphocytes. It wiggles over to the lymphocytes and it docks at something called the MHC, the major histocompatibility uh, complex or locus, it presents the processed antigen. And if the cell has previously been programmed to see that processed antigen as a foreign invader, then a process called kinase activation, technically known as phosphorylation, you put highly charged molecules called phosphate onto a whole set of proteins and that affects the surface, that affects the messages going to the nucleus that say divide, divide, it's time to divide. But we look at an even further upstream process of that initial kinase that phosphorylates the surface of the cell. And we distinguish reaction from non-reaction. There's false positives and we train people carefully to distinguish them. We have excellent line split samples, better than any other technology because of the precision that we build into each step of quality control. And so what we do is we watch the ex vivo response that the body would have inside itself, except we're doing it in the laboratory. We have applied this in outcome studies to type one diabetes and type two diabetes. And starting from best standard of care, we achieved exceptional results. That is a full milligram percent reduction in the hemoglobin A1C and other markers of benefit, which means adding 20 years of quality life starting from best standard of care according to the American Diabetes Association. And then before that, we had done a study on fibromyalgia and we continue to have the best outcome results there that sustain over time. People continue to feel and function well they do not spend as much time in the doctor's office, but they often do spend more time with their loved ones and in some activity that they particularly choose and enjoy. 
So we have over the years put to the test every step and optimized those steps because before I opened the lab, I was on the senior staff of the National Institutes of Health. And each year that I was at NIH at the clinical center, we introduced a method uh, that became, at least for some time, in most cases still, the reference standard by improving precision, sensitivity, specificity, and predictive index are terms I know well, because the two authors, one was a classmate of mine and the other was a mentor to me. Uh, so yes, we have high technology. We have brought ELISA and cell culture together for the first time. Now, in regard to whether the lymphocyte that reacts is a type 2 B cell uh, complex or a type 4 T cell. We can distinguish that on a research basis. The cost of doing that would be so high and the value of such limited nature that we don't even think about doing that routinely. But we do know that we're measuring programmed, pre-programmed B and T cells and those that are immune complex activated because of research studies that we and others have done. So whole textbooks have been written about this subjects. Um, I was fortunate to be at the earliest days of uh, learning the language, what was called the generative grammar of the immune defense and repair uh, system. And I think we, with the LRA system, continue to advance and provide uh, more complete more actionable, more personalized uh, um, uh, ways of reducing suffering and affliction, of making symptoms go away by evoking healing responses, by evoking the body's ability to repair itself, by restoring tolerance in the immune defense and repair system, by getting in more of the good and excluding the bad. It's a choice. Now's the time.